So this is from the first section of this unit. We just wanted to do a review of it since we've covered quite a bit since then. Remember that to write an equation for a circle, we need the center and the radius. We need to be able to write. There we go. So center at hk and radius, uh, but we just need it squared for the equation. We don't actually need to know the length of the radius. All right, so this first one <coughs> doesn't, well, both of them don't have any. There wasn't a turning kiosk in this building. And so we have to find our own point, and you can do that in a way that is easier or maybe a little harder. So what's the best point for this one? Or at least potentially the best point to use for that first one. Um, one, uh, two. Yeah, I think I agree with you. So probably this point at one, two. And then, of course, the coordinates of this center for this one are what? That's not one. That's two that's is. not one two. That's two one. That's two one. Well, then why did you say one two? Because, because there's also there's one, one two at the top right left. next to it. There's also. Yeah, there's one of them. I see it. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use that one since I already wrote it. Uh, tell me about the center. Coordinates of it? They're just zero. Anytime you can use zero, it's really nice. Okay, so here's where we are for this one. H and K are both zero, so it just boils down to X squared plus Y squared. And then how do we find R squared? Yeah, so basically you need the Pythagorean the theorem to find the radius using that right triangle. So the hypotenuse of this little triangle with, this, with the right side of 1 and the bottom of 2. So R squared is just, let me say this before I go on. With these graph ones, you can kind of just count the boxes, right? Like I just did 1 squared plus 2 squared. But we also wrote down the distance formula without the square root, which was x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And then you have to put the square root. But that's kind of what I just did when I looked at this and saw one a length or a distance of 1 and a length of 2. Right, I did the x2 minus x1 and that kind of stuff. So for the graphing ones, you don't have to write this out. You could just say 2 squared, that's the change in x. So it's 2 minus 0. And then 1 squared, which is 1 minus 0. So do you see the connection? But I'm not always going to give you a graph necessarily. I might just give you points. The center is here, and a point on the circle is 2, 1. And so then it would probably be better to do it this way. So be flexible. Be able to do it both ways. Anyway, I don't need a square root for this problem because we want r squared. And so r squared is 5. If, we, if I asked you what is the radius as well, what would you do with that? Just square root, yeah. Okay, so our final result or our final equation for this circle is just x squared plus y squared equals 5. So that tells you it's a center of 0, 0, and then the radius is square root of 5. How'd that one go? Alright. Okay, this will be on the test when we get there. That's why we're reviewing it. And as I've mentioned repeatedly, you should study this stuff very often. Like if not every day, like maybe take Saturday and Sunday off. But every other day you should be studying this stuff because there's a lot. We're going to add five more theorems basically today about chords, and that's just section three. So uh, you got to keep studying to know it. All right, center this time at negative one, two. And then over here, I don't know, maybe use one, zero. Anytime you can get a zero, it's a little bit nice. You could use negative three zero, but then you have a negative sign. Not that that's a huge deal. So we have x minus negative one squared 
Again, x minus is part of the formula. Negative 1 is the x-coordinate of the point. Okay, and then we have y minus 2 squared equals r squared. So we have it started, and then we need to find that r squared again. Okay, so we have the graph, so we can just count those two things. So r squared is, what is the length of that? The vertical. Two. It's two. And the horizontal? One, two. So also two. So r squared is eight. So our overall equation is x plus one squared plus y minus two squared equals eight. Okay. How'd that go? How'd that one go? Give me a, some kind of signal. Did you get these? Like, are we doing okay with them since it's been a little while? Okay. Well, I'll try to remember to continue to throw these in here once in a while so you can stay on top of it. If your name is on this list, you are staying when the bell rings at 2.50. Um, assuming that they ring the bell, but you will stay in here and work till 3.15 on something, okay? Uh, this work time is not just hang out and be on your phone. It is work on something. It doesn't have to be math, but something, okay? I'm looking at this like, does anybody get to go? Good job. <laughs> All right, do I need to, are you good? Can I move on? Okay. okay, grab your notes. We're going to add stuff about chords, but we're also going to use it to quickly review tangents and the other stuff that we talked about. Oh, yeah, what is What? I don't know. It depends how this stuff goes. It won't be next week, probably the weekend. Alright, so far we've talked about, we just reviewed this section, equation of a circle. Before that was pretty much review of, for sure, of prior classes about diameter and radius, area and circumference. Uh, but the circumference and area formulas did come up when we started talking about sector area and arc length. So a couple things to remind you, we have major arc notation and minor arc notation. Then we had measure of an arc and length of an arc. And those were totally different. So make sure that you read carefully. We are going to be talking again today about measure of an arc, which is the angle that's swept through by the arc. Okay, It's an angle measure. Arc length was measured in units of distance. Right? meters, feet, centimeters, inches, whatever. Okay, remember arc length and sector area both were the fraction out of the total angle. So a fraction of 360. There we go. So a fraction of the 360 times the circumference, fraction of the 360 times the area. Okay, it was just whatever fraction that piece is. I thought, I think you guys agreed, but those were pretty intuitive, like it made sense to your gut. The segment was a little bit of a pain. We have an example in the back, how to find the area of that. And then we got to tangent lines, and we had, what was the main tool that we used to solve anything tangent? Pythagorean theorem, okay? This always created right triangles because of this theorem. Scroll down. This theorem in green, the radius is perpendicular to a tangent, so it created right triangles. Pretty much in all cases, that's what we used. Okay, but we didn't use Sokotoa because we didn't ever know angles. All right. And then we definitely use this one a lot. Uh, tangents from a common point are congruent, which set up congruent triangles and allowed even more solving. So we are going to move from that to chords now. And just as a heads up, let me get to this picture. 
There it is. If you look at these, these are kind of all sorts of different lines that we use on a circle. And notice that we have tangent, that's a line that's part of this circle. We have chord and we have secant. And so by the end of this unit, we're going to have all sorts of different kinds of lines doing stuff uh, with names associated. So again, that emphasizes stay caught up on studying this stuff and keeping it straight. All right, what was your question? The segment is the area here. The chord is the purple line that makes part of the segment. I think, I don't know. For me, this the name segment will never make sense for what it is. Right? It always implies to me a line segment. But that's what we're stuck with. So. All right. So, guys, a chord is a line that has endpoints on the circle. So a chord does not extend past the circle, nor is it just like a line inside. It's going to be on the circle. So when we read this, we see R to T has end points, meaning it stops on the circle. But what's another name for RT? It's a diameter. It's also a diameter in that case. So the diameter is a special chord. Okay? But... RS is also a chord, and obviously it's not a diameter. So we can draw infinite chords throughout a circle, like all over the place. Look down here. This is kind of telling you something and asking you a question at the same time. So it says, why is angle BAC congruent to DAE? And so I'll put that marking in here. Why those two It's asking why are those two congruent? It can't be vertical. True, it is. They are not vertical angles because it's those lines are not straight. Like C to E has a bend in it, right? So they're not straight lines. But why are they congruent? Yeah, right. Because line C D and line E E are congruent. Yeah, awesome. So these two chords are congruent, therefore their angles are. So that's going to be a relationship that we rely on some in order to solve. Any chord that's congruent has a congruent central angle. Make sense? Okay. Oh, yeah. Would you like to see one? No. Okay. I'm joking. Well, no, I'm... It's for real. You're going to do that. Do you want to see it now or wait? Now, I don't want you to write down all these off of the screen. We'll do it together. But I just want you to see that we have one, two, three, four, five theorems about these chords. Okay? There's all sorts of things that we can do with chords. So... Let's go write them down. We'll just start with the basics and work up to them. You see why I told you you need to be studying? Yeah. Okay. This is confusing. What is confusing? Everything about this math. Oh. I, don't think I'm, I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, yeah. Well, at least we'll make uh, the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is, let me zoom this a little bit. A segment with end points. And the big idea here is that they are on the circle. The, the end points are on the circle, so it doesn't go through. If it did go through, that would be considered a secant, but we're not there yet. Why does math have to confuse me so much? So name a couple of these. So that is chord. We have chord A, B. And notice that we notate it kind of like, or not kind of, it's just like a line segment in a figure, like a triangle or a rectangle.
Okay, so we have a couple chord examples there. Chord A, B, chord C, D. Underneath chord, the word I mean, you could write that the diameter is a special chord. Or you could just call it a chord too. The diameter is also a chord. How many, do we have any musicians in here? A couple of you. So chords, we have chords in that. Oh, no. It's a very, it's, 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 a, it's very different. Uh, thing. Uh, yeah, um, a chord is multiple notes played on the joke. Music theory is really weird. I don't get it. Oh. Well, music theory. It does make sense. It's ma bit. very, very mathematical. <laughs> music is easy. It's. I'm sorry. You know, well, are you taking any more math? Like, will you, will you learn about like sinusoidal functions? Huh? That's that's that's, that's basically the the concept behind us. Like a sinusoidal. Behind music, like oh, frequency, oh, yeah. amplitude is how loud it is. Anyway. Oh wait, back back that up, please. What the heck is sinusoidal? You just explained what it is. Well, not really. I know. He just went. The root word of sinusoidal is sine. And I, I showed you the sine curve, but we, that, that's not part of this class. Anyway, chord. You'll get to it in pre calc someday. Assuming you can pass the good one. <laughs> well, we're probably going to be in the same class next year. Yeah, I so think it, yes, yes, you will get by. You'll be there. All right, we're really going to talk about three different types of congruence in in this chord world. One of them I already showed you, we kind of did when I asked you about the angle. Okay? So congruent chords have congruent Central angles, and then in parentheses, I want you to put the, the, the converse is also true, but we'll just say it as and vice versa. In other words, congruent, cent congruent central angles have congruent chords if that exists in, in our situation. So, in your picture. Go ahead and draw two chords. They do not need to be um, exactly opposite of each other. Like they don't need to be vertical angles. But what I want you to show is that the central angle for each one, those are congruent. And then that the chords are as well. So lots of congruent notation there. Oh yeah, I got him too. Okay, next. Let's let's number these maybe so you can see a list of but this is still under the header of congruent chords. So this one will be congruent arcs have congruent chords. Also this one is the the converse, if you remember that word, the converse is also true. And so that we can just say and vice versa. So if you have a congruent chord, you also have a congruent arc. Okay, so again, this one, slightly different version. This time we're comparing the arcs to the chords. So mark the chords congruent between the two points. Also mark the arcs congruent as well. Okay, so again, the chord doesn't depend on the radius, at least not what we're writing right now. So congruent arcs, congruent chords, and vice versa. Did anyone do the whole thing? Sorry, it's optional. Are we good on that? 
All right, next one. There's a third? Yeah. He said there's like seven. What? With this, I'm asking you. What the heck? Equal distance. Okay, if chords are equidistant from the center, they are congruent. That makes sense. If you are cutting a pizza and you slice it the same distance from the center, you each get the same amount of pizza, right? Like, think about that. Uh, the, from the center, the further towards the edge you go, if it's the same distance, it's going to be the same um, distance across the remaining part of the circle. In order to draw this picture, try to draw two chords that are approximately the same. Like I don't expect you to do it perfectly, like I just didn't. For this center, and then here's what's important on this. Let's use a different color. We need to show that these two pieces are congruent. Right, the distance from the center is congruent. That also gives us an idea. Uh, let's use now. You need to show what we're trying to show, which is the chords are congruent, but now it looks like it's split into two pieces. Don't it's hard to not show it that way, but what we're really saying is the whole chord is congruent, not just the pieces, right? So make sure you read your definition, but <clears throat> if it's equidistant from the center, it's congruent. Hmm. Yes. I don't know who's cutting a pizza like that, but okay. That's, that is not how you cut pizza. If you cut your pizza like that, you should be put in jail. Jail. Yes. Given the death sentence, I don't care if you're cutting your pizza like death that. Death sentence, too? Here comes the mafia. <laughs> Bro, if you are cutting your pizza like that, there's something wrong. Maybe cut it to within that for like a work mode. Yeah. 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 If I have my own pizza, I'll yeah. cut it however yeah. I want. Yeah. And you deserve to be in prison if you cut it like that. Alright, are we good so far? Yeah, I think we should probably pause there and see if we can pick up a problem or two. I don't want to start with that one, though. So let's start with some of these. Let's go ahead and finish writing them. I don't have a specific one for that right Alright, last one. Any questions on those first three? Why? Any questions on why? Are we good? No, I know we haven't used them, but are we good so far? Yeah. Alright. And then we're going to write specifically about the relationship between a chord and like the radius or diameter, if it's perpendicular, what it does. Okay? So we can title this slightly different for this next box.
You guys remember what perpendicular means? Yeah. It's across. That's not really what it means, but... <laughs> okay, so if it's perpendicular to the radius or diameter, if you don't know what perpendicular means, you should probably make a little note next to that perpendicular right there. Huh? Can you write it? No, I'm not writing it for you. I've said that about 50 times this year. Wait. Uh huh? Yeah. What? This perpendicular stuff? Oh. All right. So if a diameter, or maybe it's just a radius, is perpendicular to a chord, see if you remember this word, I think you will, it bisects the chord. What does bisect mean? Yeah, so it divides in half or two congruent pieces. You got it. Or we should have just... Hmm? Okay, so on your circle, draw some chord. And remember, a diameter has to go through the center. So I don't care if you draw this as a radius or a diameter, it doesn't matter. In other words, here, look here. I'm going to draw one and then sh show you what I mean. It could be this, so a diameter going all the way across could be shown, or it could just be a radius, so there, right? It's like half the circle, and also all we care about is just a little piece. So either one, doesn't matter which one. Uh, but it's got to be perpendicular, so mark your 90. And then here's the big idea. It splits these into congruent pieces. It splits the chord into congruent pieces. So, one thing you might do, I wish I could, let's see if I can zoom this and draw that. One thing I'd like to do is add kind of like that's the radius and all we are showing is the fact that it splits the chord in half. But I would like on the other side of the picture just, and you can use two circles if you'd rather, but here's another version that I would like you to write in. Hey, they're trying their best, man. Okay. Here's why I wanted to draw it again. What are those two? Let me highlight. What are these two lines called? They are the hypotenuse, true. In the circle, those are the radius. Okay, so when we get into solving for these, you might need to know. The length, if you happen to know that, can you guys, the length of the chord, and you know it's split in half, and you know the radius, that would allow you to solve for this distance, or perhaps this distance, either one. Okay, or let's go a different way. Maybe we know the height here, the distance to the chord, and we want to solve for the radius. So, but the point is, it's a right triangle formed by the radiuses and this chord. Does everybody see what I'm saying there? And so if we have a right triangle and we know some length, probably what will we use to solve for another length? Probably. Probably Pythagorean. 
But also we could, you know, this could be a situation where we ask for an angle and we use Sokotoa too. But it's very similar to tangent. But do you see how all of this is going on inside the circle, right? Okay. I, I have a little, I hate the word formula, but I have a little formula that will relate to that picture, but I want us to get there before I just hand it over and see if we can make it, okay? And then once we do, I'm okay if you want to use it, okay? But we'll kind of come up with it first. Questions on that one? Do you want to do an example or try one on your own? Do? do? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's don't do one of these word problems just yet. So now, since we wrote that down, now we can do. Let's do this one. Do you feel comfortable drawing that picture on your examples section of your notes? It's going to be tough. Right. Do that. So just real quick again, this circle symbol with the dot in the middle is telling us it's named after the center of the circle, which is P in this case. Wait, how is wait how is measure okay. arc angle A B thirty three? Yeah, it actually it does to me. How? Um, so guys, we're getting a question of how can because the measure the of minor point arc A B. That's what this piece means here. Remember, arc measure is an angle measure, oh, not an arc length. And they're saying, well, why is it 43? Well, there's roughly 45, so it's pretty darn close to 45 degrees. Okay? Okay. So, number one, when you get a problem like this, already there's a number of lines in here, right? And we're told something kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit backdoor here, right? Like, here's some lines, here's a length, this GC length is 2, and then we're told some unrelated arc measure right here, that that's 43 degrees. So how in the world are we going to use that in order to solve for what we're asked to solve, which is DF clear over here, right? Everybody following? Okay, well, we have to string together a number of different theorems to get there, is really how it goes, like we have done before, but not always. And in this case, you kind of have to, this is why I'm telling you to study them, okay? Because you, you really need to know what they are. Yeah? Um, so is the 2 supposed to be a uh, GC? Yes, 2 is GC. Okay, so this is... So, number one, what do we know about, just tell me everything you know so far that we've written about chords. Let's just start there. Just look through your notes, the, the um, boxes part, no, obviously this part. What all do we know about chords? Okay. Congruent chords have congruent central angles. It does tell us that AC equals DF. So are these chords congruent? Okay. What else do we know? Congruent arcs have congruent chords. Okay. So congruent arcs have congruent chords. Uh, let's vice go. versa because of what's it called? Say that again. I said and vice versa. Thank you, Lillian, by the way. So he said and vice versa because we already know the chords are congruent, so the arcs are, right, or vice versa, either way. Okay, what else do we know about chords? Good. Do we know these two chords are equidistant from the center? 
We aren't told that, but because they're congruent, doesn't that make it true? Okay, so we could review and mark that these two lines are congruent because they are, the two chords are congruent, those, they must be equidistant from the center. And there's one more that we wrote, which is what? Okay, good. Do we know that to be true? If a radius is perpendicular to a chord, do we know that? Yeah. Um, because of those 90s? The symbol for perpendicular, remember, is an upside down capital T. So you don't have to write that word. All right, so we have all these pieces. What is the result of a radius being perpendicular to a chord? Bisects it. It bisects it. So what can we do with the two? Yeah, we can copy it to the other side. Okay, so those two are congruent. And we already said that the two chords are congruent. We were told A, C, and D, F are congruent. Okay, so we can mark that those two are congruent. And then go ahead and tell what F, D, or D, F is. Four. So D, F is just four. Now, how would we find how far P, H is, or P, G, either one of those? Any thoughts on that? Like, what is the length of the radius, if we wanted to know that, maybe? Oh, A squared plus B squared. Oh, I wish this picture was a little bigger. I don't like writing small. Well, so you guys, yeah, H is that point right there. If I said how long is PH, what would you do? Could you even do it? Well, I mean, we know the 43 degrees for it. Yeah, we sure do. Right over there. Oh. Could we make use of the 43 degrees? Yes. Okay. So even though this problem, we're done with what we put here. Let's extend the problem a little bit so you have some further examples, okay? I'm going to just write this a little bit smaller so we have some room. Okay, so add a question here. E, H. Where'd you get seven? Perfectly between base and acidic. Oh. pH balance. <laughs> oh my god. Neutral pH? Yeah. Alright, so what is the what is the length of pH? My first thing I would do is again, I've told you this pretty much every example. I would redraw a focus on that little piece. Here's how I would draw it myself. I would draw this little 90 degrees. We know that dh is two. So d H, P. We know DH is 2 because it's congruent up there to the other uh, chord. We're trying to find PH, so maybe call that X. Do we know the radius? No, we don't. But we do know this angle right here. How? That's really the crux of this problem. How do we know that that is 43? See if you can string together the theorems for that. Okay? So follow. This arc is 43 degrees. And what is true about the measure of an arc and its central angle? They are congruent, right? So this is 43 degrees there. So how do we solve for x? Oh, we can use um, law, of, yeah, we can use law of signs. Law of signs or Sokotoa. Which Sokotoa? Like which of the Sokotoas? Forty-three of the adjacent opposites. 
so two oh, x. So tangent. Tangent, yep. From 43, we have 2 and x, which are opposite and adjacent. So tangent of 43 equals 2 over x. All right, this should look familiar from here. How do we solve for x? Multiply to get it out of the denominator, and then divide by a tangent of 43. Okay, and uh, your um, your calculator shouldn't have switched, but if, sure just double check that it's in degrees. So two divided by tangent of forty three. So that's a two point one four. Two point one four. Okay, so now we know pH. Can we find the the radius? Is it even possible? To, to find the radius, we would need the hypotenuse in this, right? Yeah, we could, then we can just use um, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so continue the problem. You could use Pythagorean theorem now. 2, 2.14. Let's do a better job that. What else could you do? What else could you do? Could we use more trig? What is the ratio, the trig ratio that relates 43, 2, and the radius? Forty-three, two, and the radius. Oh. Is that so, ka, or toa? So, sine. That's sine, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So, Pythagorean theorem or sine. Sine of 43 equals 2 over r. So, r equals 2 over sine 43. And we get 2.9. Okay, so now we've kind of solved that entire area, if you want to think of it that way. Um, if we wanted, could we find EH now? Yes, we could. How? Isn't EH just pH minus, sorry, isn't it the radius minus pH? Okay. All right, so I don't want to, we don't need to like do every version of this, but just know with your Pythagorean theorem, your theorems, your circle theorems, and some Sokotoa, you can solve for lots of stuff in these problems, okay? Maybe it just says, what's the radius? Maybe it says pH, maybe it says just find EH, and then you'd have to do all of this to get there, okay? All right. What do you think? They're not all like so involved, but some of them are. It's okay. Any questions before we move on? Let's try one of those word problems and see how they go. And then maybe we'll be ready to start our homework. Do you guys like the word problem kind? Do you want to do flowers or trucks? <laughs> um, huh. Yeah, flowers, I guess. Flowers, okay. Go ahead and, uh, you don't need to put this on your green packet, but put it somewhere so you can do the problem with me. Green packet. If you want to use a box on your green packet, that's fine. I guess I Go ahead and read it. So. <laughs> so they need at least four inches of water. So which direction are we talking about in the picture? four inches of water, that's vertically, right? So this direction. So a sphere can be like the cross section of a sphere is a circle. Uh, so it's filled until the surface is five inches in diameter. That's something you could measure. You're filling it, filling it, filling it. You can measure it horizontally, right? 
Um, is the water deep enough for the flower? So we need to find H. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Give it a shot. See if you can find H. Uh, by the way, the 6 is talking about what? Uh, the the diameter. Diameter. That's the diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now, I would never do this problem as a base. I would do it as a circle drawn in geometry mode. Myself. <laughs> So I would redraw this as just the cross section of this vase. And we have a chord that's five. It's, it's inches in this case, five inches. We know our diameter is six. It's kind of hard to show that without getting in the way of our picture. Okay, and then we're trying to find... Overall, we're trying to find this height. But we can kind of do it in two parts. Here's what I mean. How far is it from here to here? I'm going to write the word diameter on here. And maybe it's a good idea even to put a center on that. So how far is this part of our height? It's three, it's the radius, right? Okay. So now we just need to figure out this distance to add to the three to see how far it is, okay? Well, let's zoom in a little bit further. To this triangle. How big is the radius? It's three and three. And again, now we're trying to find this height here. Okay. Do we know that that's a right triangle? How? Were we told that the chord is, like is this um, one of the kind where he says, the chord is perpendicular to the radius? Yeah, it is, but also it's because this, what kind of triangle is that I just draw? With those two threes? Yeah, it's isosceles, and when you draw a line perpendicular to the opposite side, as a bisector, um, it's a perpendicular bisector, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. How do we find x now that we have all that written in there? Okay. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, again, one more picture. And the reason for that is because this side is not 5. What is that side? 2 and a half. Yeah. Okay? So be careful with your placement of your three. So Pythagorean theorem says two and a half squared plus x squared equals three squared. So x, let's just combine steps, is the square root of nine minus two and a half squared, which is 6.25. I'll just write that in. And we get one point, let's just call it 1.7. Okay, and then all the way up here, 1.7. So our total depth is 3 plus 1.7 or 4.7 inches of water. So the flower should be good. Okay. So think about what we used there. Um, honestly, yes, you have to use your chord theorems, but I think honestly, drawing good pictures is the best or the most important part of that process, so that you break it down, seeing what actually is going on. So keep refining your picture with each step. That's really some of the best advice I can give you.